So thank you all for uh, giving me the privilege of sharing some of my ideas and other people's ideas that I like uh, with you and um, for joining me in a conversation about gratitude. Um, so I'm just going to start with this little sort of mandala slash flower that we like to um, share with audiences that tries to capture what we do at The Greater Good. And maybe you've gotten some of this from Anne and Vicki, but if you haven't, um, or the other speakers that you've had the sort of wonderful privilege of hearing uh, over the course of the last few days. Um, I know that you talked with uh, Rick Hansen about happiness. You talked with Kristen Neff about compassion. You talked with um, Eve Ekman about empathy and altruism to some extent in, uh, to the extent that they relate to things like burnout and just general emotional intelligence. What I want to share with you today are some ideas that we have about gratitude. I'm going to start with telling you about why. Like, why is this interesting? Who cares? Do we care? Is this a value that is worth uh, sort of hitching our wagon to? Is this something to really prioritize in your life, in your classroom? Um, I hope that by the end of this next 40 minutes, you'll feel like it is, if you don't already. Um, I'm going to tell you about the results from a recent poll that was administered to the US. Um, and I think there are probably 40,000 responses. This was administered by the John Templeton Foundation. And essentially, they asked a lot of questions about why gratitude, who feels grateful, and what do you feel grateful for? And they just wanted to get a sense, like, what's the lay of the land? How are people feeling about gratitude? Um, first of all, pretty much a huge majority feels like gratitude's important. Like, this is an important part of who we are, what we're meant to be, and, um, and that it's also really important to teach it. You know, where there were questions like, is it important? How important do you think it is for parents to teach their kids gratitude? And most people rated that very high. It's really important. Presumably, that extends to teachers also. Um, when asked about what we were grateful for, people were most grateful for family. Shouldn't be surprising. You guys are all in your pseudo families now. Um, and freedom. And this will be interesting as we talk a little bit about what gratitude is and what it means to be grateful for something like a person versus a metaphysical construct like freedom. Um, sadly, <laughs> what lands at the bottom of the gratitude I'm most grateful for uh, list is work. Okay, So uh, it's an interesting thing. Um, who do we thank? We're really good at thanking the people we're close to. Our families, our friends, our spouses. Um, we're kind of OK at thanking other people in our community, neighbors, coworkers, um, people who uh, screen our luggage at the airport. <laughs> we're OK at thanking those people. We're not great at it, even though they're doing us a great service. right? Think about it that way. Uh, we never thank our bosses. Thank you, Ann Schulman. <laughs> she in here? Um, we never thank our bosses, sadly, which is really interesting to think about, both if you have a boss and if you are a boss, right? How, what your role in that dynamic is. Um, and when asked about our own gratitude, people felt like, well, yeah, I'm pretty grateful, and I'm more grateful than I was like five years ago. But asked about other people's gratitude, there's this sort of very depressing sense that everyone else is not very grateful. Okay. So this is probably not very possible, right? If, you're, if everyone thinks their own gratitude is big and everyone else's gratitude is not big, that's not really what's going on. What's going on is we're probably just not that good at expressing our gratitude. If you feel like you're grateful, you remember all the times that you're saying I thank you and appreciating things, but you're not necessarily either experiencing or remembering gratitude directed towards yourself. So that should be a motivator to one be more aware of expressing your gratitude, and also perhaps focus on the times when people express gratitude towards you. OK, so let's move forward and talk about what we think gratitude is. Um, there are really two ways to think of it, and I'm going to add a third. One is it's sort of like part of your personality. You're a grateful person, right? For whatever reason, perhaps by some fluke of biological predisposition that science doesn't understand quite yet, or wonderful, warm, safe, safety-oriented uh, parenting, you feel very grateful, right? Perhaps that's just part of your demeanor, right? And, and there's research that suggests that this kind of personality, demeanor, is actually really beneficial to your health, well-being, and interpersonal functioning. 
Um, the other way to think about gratitude, which is the way that it's a little bit easier for me to talk about, is that it's an emotion, right? It's a specific pointed experience that happens when you realize that you've incurred some kind of benefit due to another person's actions. Okay? It's that moment of, wow, I appreciate that this other person has gone out of their way to help me, okay? to do something that has benefited me measurably. Okay? So it's interesting when I talk about the science of gratitude to think about how those things both are part of the story and that they're a little bit different. Right? Um, I want to stay on this slide for a little bit longer from a, from a biological perspective, when we try to understand gratitude, it's a little bit tricky because there are multiple things going on. Does anybody want to tell me what gratitude feels like? I'd love to hear from you. What does it feel like to have that experience of gratitude? Yeah? Okay, warm and happy. Those are the things I'm looking for. Anybody else? Warm and happy? Full of light. Bathed with light, yeah. For me, it's a gush of emotion that usually pours out of my eyeballs. OK, gush of emotion <laughs> pouring forth from the eyeballs. OK, good, good, yeah? It's other directed, whether it's toward nature, people. It's like directed outward, usually. OK, I really want to echo that one. It's other directed, OK? It's towards, you said, nature, another person, some kind of, again, metaphysical quality that, that makes you feel like your life is joyful, right? So those two things are really interesting, right? It's other directed. It's about what's outside of you. It's not about what's inside. It's not about what happened five minutes ago and what might happen in five minutes. It's not something that's associated with worry about your particular well-being, right? It's outward directed, and it's extraordinarily pleasant. Gushing joy from the eyeballs, bathed in light, happy, right? Incredible descriptions of real joy associated with thinking outside yourself. That's the magic of gratitude, I would like to argue, both as a disposition and as an emotional experience. Um, the greater good has been really interested in gratitude for quite some time. Um, without going through a laundry list, I will briefly summarize gratitude in research that has looked at your dispositional gratitude, that is how grateful you are as a person, and research that has looked at trying to boost your gratitude, trying to muscle your gratitude up by giving you some sort of exercise, some sort of practice. We've shown that gratitude benefits your health, gratitude makes you happier, gratitude makes you more successful in your interpersonal relationships, gratitude in schools is associated with students who are happier in their classroom, and students who feel a greater sense of investment in their community at school. So to the extent that we boost gratitude, or at least sort of ha uh, hold on to the gratitude that perhaps some people already harbor, we're doing a service to our communities uh, throughout. So now, I'd like you guys to get out a pen and paper. And I'm venturing out of my comfort zone, because I'm not someone who typically guides spiritual exercises, <laughs> but I'm doing it because I want to give you an interactive experience and uh, I, I want to challenge myself. Um, so what I'd like you to do is I'm going to ring this wonderful set of bells and I'm going to time three minutes and in that three minutes I'd like you to do a sort of stream of consciousness gratitude writing exercise. Okay? And what that means is just put your pen to the paper and write. Don't worry about what words come out. Don't worry about grammar. Nobody's going to read it. Don't worry about what people think of what you're writing. Just don't pick your pen up. If you can't think of anything to write, just write the same thing over and over again until something burbles up. But the idea is to write about the people you're grateful for, the things you're grateful for, it's OK to say, I'm really grateful for my new MacBook Pro, if that's what's really making the difference in your day. right? The metaphysical constructs that you're grateful for, freedom, democracy, nature. right? So let's take three minutes to sort of go into this space of just focusing on gratitude. That was my first mistake. Here we go. Ready? <laughs>
Okay. In typical standardized test fashion, you can lift your pens. <laughs> um, all right, so what I'd love to do is hear a little bit from some of you who feel inclined to share something that was really poignant that came out of that experience. Is there something you wrote that maybe surprised you that felt really particularly moving? Yeah. So I wasn't paying attention to the time. Um, but the last thing I wrote down is I feel loved. I feel loved. Fabulous. Um, mine was very centered around opportunity, like opportunity to learn, opportunity to grow, opportunity to like get better. So it's all about being grateful for opportunities. Fabulous. Yeah. I just realized that even with three minutes, I am, I could not list enough of the people and the connections that I, to people that I'm grateful for. Right. Even in three minutes, I could not list the number of people and connections I feel grateful for. Three minutes can be so powerful, right? Uh, any other? Yeah. I just, um, when I, whenever I do gratitude stuff, I feel like there's just such a tender, vulnerable place inside. Um, and it's really, it's really always surprising to me, even though like I kind of make a regular practice because I went to see Dr. Uh -huh. several years ago, and so it's become part of a daily practice for me, but it always brings up the... Yeah. Okay, so uh, did everyone catch that? It brings up this tender, vulnerable sort of person when, when, when you do uh, gratitude exercises or practices. Yeah. I think what surprised me, well, what didn't surprise me was when I thought of gratitude, I really thought in the present, in like my life, in the present. Mm -hmm. But quickly I went and began writing about my parents, uh -huh. which I don't think of that often, mm -hmm. but it became very tender when I started thinking about my mom. Good, good. So I want to I wanna go on that tender plus connection plus feeling loved sort of train for a minute. And I want to do that because I want to hopefully give you some ideas to think about when someone asks, well, what is, why gratitude, right? I mean, is this just something your parents teach you or is this something that humans as a species that have evolved over many thousands of years have sort of are biologically inclined toward? Like, do, do we have gratitude? Is it part of our evolutionary sort of inheritance? And what do you, does anybody have any thoughts? What, how many people think it's something we're taught by our parents? And how many, let's start with that. Social culture teaches us gratitude. How many think it's something biologically endowed? OK, well, I'm glad that there wasn't a clear cut, because there is no clear cut. Hopefully, you all are like, why is she trying to do this nature nurture thing, right? <laughs> we all know that we come biologically predisposed for many things, and our life experiences sort of uh, massage that predisposition towards whoever we end up being. But the evolutionary argument is, yeah, we have gratitude. We come evolved with this for the very purpose of supporting, forming, building, and uh, sort of uh, forging alliances, right? If we want to have connections, we want to be in relationships that are meaningful, gratitude is an instrumental part of that. Appreciating that someone else has done something for you, appreciating that you are vulnerable in moments, and you actually require aid, support, assistance from your community is essential to being the hyper-social organisms that we are. You have a question back there? An observation: A lot of people raise beliefs uh -huh. that includes thanking God. Uh -huh. There are a lot, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to think about gratitude. I would never suggest that thanking God was, 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 was undesirable. I think that there are many reasons why thanking some higher being or some existential entity is actually very powerful. Um, obviously, if it's at the disservice of your connections to other human beings, then it's, it's complicated. But um, I think that traditions that emphasize gratitude are very important. Some of the strongest speakers in this gratitude space are from the Christ Christian tradition. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a really good point. Um, what I also want to focus on next is what are some of the things that make gratitude feel stronger versus less strong? Anybody have any thoughts on that based on their experience? Yeah. Um, like the genuineness? Yeah, the authenticity, the genuineness. What we would call that is intention. So if, if you're 
um, in, in, you're in company with somebody else and you're hungry and they don't want to finish their french fries and they offer them to you, that's very kind, you feel grateful. If you're hungry and you're with someone else and they say, I'd like to buy you lunch, here's the menu, you choose something, I want to help you out. There's a different level of experience there, right? And what's the difference is there's a difference in the intentionality and the cost, right? I want to do something for you versus oh, I'm just in that lucky position where I have something that I can give you that makes you feel good, but I didn't really have to make any effort, right? So intentionality is really an interesting piece of gratitude, and researchers have shown that when you perceive an act as intentional, the experience of gratitude is stronger. So there's two ways to think about that, right? As the benefactor, right? Perhaps adding a little more intentionality into your opportunities to, uh, to be kind to others is worthwhile. On the recipient side, Grant intentionality, even if it seems like it was low, right? Grant intentionality and give yourself that extra feeling of positivity and connection, even if your more judgmental side might be like, oh, well, they just had those extra fries and they're giving them to me for nothing, right? right? There's ways to sort of know what the uh, measures are and how to use those to your advantage. Um, I, I mentioned cost, right? We're more grateful when we feel like somebody went out of their way when a, per a person made a personal sacrifice. Um, value, how much did it change your, late, your life, your day? How strongly do you feel like what this person did really made a difference? If it feels like it made a big difference, you're more grateful. If it was sort of incidental, like eh, you know. If you're like pulling up to the toll booth and you're like, I didn't bring my fast track and I have no cash and I don't have my wallet and, and I'm, it's gonna be a terrible day and somebody in front of you miraculously pays your toll, you're going to be super grateful, right? It makes a huge difference that that, that uh, impacted your day in that moment of importance. Um, more recently, the people who study gratitude and relationships have started to um, tell a story about the thought, right? This whole idea that it's the thought that counts. That you're more grateful when you feel like somebody did something because they care about you, because they want you to be well, right? So one, they did it with intention. Two, they did it at their own personal sacrifice. Three, they did something that really changed your day. And four, they did it because they care about you. So these are the things that really move your experience of gratitude and that knowing what they are, when you're in a position to be a benefactor, you can induce more powerful gratitude in others. And when you are the person who is experiencing gratitude, you can sort of try to relish in the qualities that are going to make your gratitude stronger, okay? Um, so, let's move forward. I, I'm, are you guys following me? Am I just being totally confusing? No, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I want to tell you about um, a couple of different ideas that have surfaced in the last three years around gratitude. Um, the first one is actually one that wasn't ours, but we were very excited about. Um, Maybe some of you have heard about Oprah Winfrey's gratitude Facebook app. So Oprah Winfrey worked with a couple of uh, colleagues of the greater good, uh, the McGonagall twins. One of them is a psychologist uh, who has gone through her academic track in a parallel uh, time to me. And the other is a famous video game designer. Um, they worked with Oprah to develop this app on Facebook, which was called The Thank You Game. And they challenged people to go to this page and hit thank you to indicate that they had thanked someone that day. It was a little bit loose scientifically. It didn't uh, get much detail. But it wasn't meant to necessarily be a scientific endeavor. It was really meant to try to push the idea, get the meme of gratitude out into popular culture. What they really did that I liked was that they focused very carefully on interpersonal gratitude. Okay? They didn't want you to say thank you for my MacBook Pro. They didn't want you to say thank you for freedom or nature. They wanted you to say thank you to person who did something for you. And they wanted you to thank them personally. Hit the button and then go out and thank them. And they told you how. And what they said is tell them what they did. Thank you for paying my toll. Tell them how much it impacted your day. It really made a difference for me and tell them that you acknowledge the effort that went into them doing that. I know, I, I really appreciate that you had the wherewithal to think about doing that in that moment and give me this incredible benefit, right? So there, the outcome of that story is how to thank someone, right? 
How do you think? A lot of times we're just like, hey, thanks a lot, right? And that's it. And that's great, and that gives us little tiny, you know, uh, I don't know, pulse of dopamine in that person's reward system, right? There, they get a little bit of pleasure. But try the more in-depth, rich style of thanking someone, right? Thank you for doing what you did. What you did really changed my day, and I really acknowledge the effort that you put forth to do what you did. That kind of thank you is way more powerful and will lead to a stronger sense of trust and connection between you and the person whom you're thanking. So add that to your little list of possible ways to uh, practice gratitude. The next thing I want to tell you about is a game slash app um, slash website <laughs> that the greater good tried to make, it, which is sort of an answer to the thanks game that Oprah and the McGonagall's made. What we made is something called thanks for, uh, thnx org. Um, don't go try to use it right now because it's in like uh, transition from first launch to thanks for 2.0, and thanks for 2.0 is going to be way better. And when it's available, we'll make sure that you all know about it. It's something that could be very useful to a lot of different communities. Um, it's not quite made for kids, but we'd love to figure out a way to do that should it become really uh, interesting and useful to people. So Thanks For was an online website where people could go and essentially keep a journal of their gratitude. Okay? So it asks you, what are you grateful for, a person or a thing? Right? If you're thank grateful for a person, what do they do? And then we ask, how much did this impact your day? How much effort do you think that they put forth to do this for you? So we asked all these little scientific questions to try to get at the more nuanced story about how, what the power of gratitude is, right? what, what, what's really moving people's experiences. Of course, we asked people lots of survey questions about their well-being, about their happiness at work, about uh, their, their basic physical health. So I'll tell you a little bit about what we found. Um, we had about 2,000 people register and do thanks for in something we called the Cal Gratitude Challenge. So people registered and we said for two weeks, every day, you've got to do this. Um, the data that I'm going to show you is mostly from about 100 of those people. Those were the ones who actually did it every single day. The other 1,900 just didn't quite get to the 14 daily <laughs> uh, report uh, or engagement level. But that's OK, because 100 people still tells an interesting story about what engaging with an online gratitude sort of exercise program every day for two weeks can do for you. So before Thanks For, we asked about have average happiness, right? Five point scale. I'm pr pretty much happy. I'm, I'm happy. People, many people in life describe themselves as very happy. This, this describes me or this does not describe me. So before Thanks For, the average 4.98. After Thanks For, 5.30. OK? So we're moving people's sense of their own personal happiness. Um, this is one of my favorite ones, which I still like, have a hard time actually believing. But I'm a data person, so you know what gives? It's, it's, it's actually what the data show. We asked people <laughs> how often in the past couple days they were having headaches or faintness or stomach aches, stomach discomfort, shortness of breath, sore muscles, you know, things that you think wouldn't necessarily have a relationship to getting online and, and describing what you've been grateful for. In, on a daily basis for two weeks. In brown is before that two-week experience. In light blue is after. So sore muscles. Gratitude makes your muscles less sore. <laughs> um, you have to, I have to back up, because obviously that's not a real causal, causal inference. right? It, it's just a correlational finding. But it's the suggestion that there's some relationship between engaging for two weeks in a gratitude practice and the extent to which you are bothered by day-to-day -day physical discomforts. Okay? Maybe it has something to do with not focusing inward as much as we might on a typical basis. Right? If you focus inward for long enough, something's going to be uncomfortable. Right? <laughs> so um, let's see. Oh, and this was another one of my favorites. So we asked people what the impact on your day of, this, uh, of, of every gratitude experience that they reported was. Okay? Um, we also asked them, as I described before, whether they were grateful for something 
or someone. Okay, this is not a before and after scale. This is average across the whole two weeks. So in brown are incidences where people said, um, I'm, gra I'm grateful for something, right? My delicious latte with the beautiful cream pattern leaf on the top, right? <laughs> Blue, gratitude for someone. So one, didn't have much of an impact on my day. Seven, made my whole day glorious. Really, I couldn't think about anything else about, except how wonderful, I, how lucky I am that this person is in my life, right? One, not that different. Two, not that different. Three, four, five, six, seven. Look what happens for seven, right? People are dramatically more likely to say that something made their whole day glorious when it's something that comes from another person. Right, then it's about something interpersonal. These are the most powerful forces, right? These interpersonal connections, being the benefactor uh, of someone else's thoughtful, effortful, influential, care-oriented actions is just glorious, right? And the, to the extent that you demonstrate that to, the other, to other people, other people are more inclined to demonstrate that towards you. Okay. Very much like the very first plot that I showed, which was the happiness before and after, but instead this is over, uh, this is how many times someone indicated that they expressed gratitude on a given day. So somebody might, we said, how many times did you feel gratitude today? Maybe they said one, maybe they said zero, maybe they said six, right? Except these are, this is like less than one, this is more than 10, right? Each of those numbers aren't necessarily how many times they experienced gratitude. Um, and then we also asked them, we had this funny little exercise where we said, you're going to make a cake today, right? What would it look like given the ingredients below? And the ingredients were like happiness, sadness, anger, irritation, joy, love, right? How much of each of these little emotional things it, would you put into your cake given, the, given to, to try to represent your day? So that was this little exercise. And if people said that they had had a whole lot of gratitude in a given day, their cakes were composed of many more positive emotions, right? They had the option of putting a tiny bit or a middle amount or a big amount. And when they said, you know, I had gratitude today four times, their day was characterized as more rich in positive emotions than for the people, uh, than negative emotions. And so not only do positive emotions go up, but negative emotions go down, right? So again, I hope I'm sort of convincing you at some level that this sort of voluntary feeling thing that maybe has some obligatory religious feel to it, right, is actually embraceable by everyone and will incur measurable benefits to everyone. Um, so what do we want to do that, that, or what can I suggest to teachers given my lack of expertise <laughs> as a teacher to the kinds of classrooms that you guys work in. I've lectured at the university level, and that's just really different. Um, <laughs> so here are a few little ideas that, um, that I came across. But I would love to hear from you guys what you think, if anybody has tried anything that isn't on this list. So journals and lists. Really, it's really fun when you see a classroom and you go in and kids have a little notebook and it's their gratitude journal. And I don't know, once a day, maybe twice a week, they go in it and they write down what they're grateful for. And you can do it in a very loose way, like it can be anything, it can be their new toy, it can be that their little sister went away to sleep away camp for a week, like whatever it is. Or you can be really directive about it and say, I want you to talk, think about a person and I want you to think about what they did how much it affected you, and, um, and, and acknowledge the effort that went into it, OK? Um, lists, same thing, right? Uh, I'm grateful for uh, breakfast. I'm grateful for recess. <laughs> I'm grateful for uh, an, a new toy. I'm grateful for my mom, right? It can just be really simple, depending on what you think is appropriate for your kids. Letters and visits. A gratitude letter is a really fun exercise. Um, Sonia Liebermeiske, who is one of our foremost experts on happiness, did a study where she had people write a gratitude letter. And then she had another group write the letter and actually deliver it. And the people who delivered it showed a bigger boost in their happiness than the people who simply wrote it. 
So this idea that writing down, sharing with the person very openly what it is you're grateful for is powerful, is, uh, is well supported by evidence. Um, gratitude art, I love this whole gratitude tree vision can be really beautiful and powerful. So each of these leaves has something that a kid wrote they're grateful for. Um, gratitude practice, really sitting around circle if you have something like that and openly articulating what it is that you are grateful for. Um, so now I'd love to hear from you guys. Are there any other gratitude exercises that you love? Yeah. Um, I just remembered uh, that I had bumped into this inadvertently, but many people here know that uh, I was, and this is as a parent and not as a teacher, that I was raising a daughter who was not making it in public school, and uh -huh. so our family decided to move her to a homeschool situation, uh -huh. and I had a driver about 40 minutes each way to uh -huh. get to her tutor, uh -huh. and I was starting to get calls from the tutor saying, you know, I don't know what to do with your daughter. She comes to school, and she just puts her head down on the table, and she just is not ready to learn, and I was beginning to panic and think I was at my wit's end. And so I decided to do this kind of game with Lily as we were driving out to school every morning. I just said, we need to start turning, I said this to myself, that we need to think of some way to get her in a better space so when I drop her off, she's ready to learn. Uh -huh. And so we practiced this game called gratitude on the drive out. Uh -huh. And I would say you could look out the window and be grateful for the cows that you see or the baby cows, or you could be grateful for something that happened in our family. But we shared, each one of us took a turn on the way out to school, and it actually made a huge difference. So I just want to say from one person's experience, yeah. I didn't know I was doing it, but I had to do something. I love that story, and what I want to riff on momentarily is grateful for the cows, grateful for people. One of the things that gratitude does that we don't necessarily talk about in the scientific domain, but that many contemplative Eastern traditions talk about, is that it, it promotes a sense of interdependence, right? When you are thinking about how someone else has played an active role in your well-being, when you're considering other people, a cow, as somehow important to your wellness in a given moment, you're really sort of sinking into this idea that whatever's happening with you in the moment that's positive is a result of the actions, the input, the engagement of a, an unnameable number of other outside entities. So focusing outwards, appreciating all of those forces that are contributing to what you have in this good moment, or in this, in this moment, is very powerful and conducive of this sense of interdependence. Yeah, Ruth. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, so Ruth. as um, an administrator at our school site, we have our PTA started Random Acts of Kindness, uh -huh. or RACs. And so they would give um, random gifts to, you know, they'd have a designated person um, that you could sign up for it. But the idea of writing thank you notes um, to the people so we get to come to work and it'll be this like, oh my goodness, and you know, some racks are better than others. But yeah. <laughs> uh, we would get like little Starbucks cards or different, but um, the administrative team, we started thinking like, wow, how great would it be if we just start doing that for our teachers, right? So I would buy a Starbucks, I, know, I see a teacher that likes Starbucks, I bring them a Starbucks coffee and just that feeling of giving and that surprise and it was really nice. It was just a feeling of, of, I did just something small, just shifted that energy that to a That's positive. Fabulous. That's fabulous. It's small and it's cheap. You know, five bucks for a Starbucks card that makes someone else just kind of gives them a little, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it, just a quick little burst of dopamine and pleasure that is tied to you, that is tied to your trust and your interpersonal sense of connection is just, it's such a, it's such a worthy investment. Um, yeah. Um, so we have a, we also have a random acts of kindness group um, with my teenagers at school. The students do it, and um, in a lot of colleges um, they do a, a like a compliments page on Facebook. But um, I would not want to keep it on Facebook. So in the girls' bathroom, um, the girls wanted to do this that they took post-it notes uh -huh. and wrote things um, to each other on post-it notes and uh -huh. stuck them all over the bathroom. Um, like the mirror and the tiles, um, saying specific things to different people, or also just kind of ones where you're like, you know, fixing your mascara in the bathroom and it says you are beautiful, and so that, those kind of things, even Fabulous. if they weren't specific, mm -hmm. I saw the level of um, 
positive just feelings on my campus go up. Fabulous. There's so many great random acts of kindness that can contribute to really so these fantastic what I want to do now is actually let since we won't have time to hear everybody's great ideas all in this kind of form I want you guys to turn into your family tables and sort of share the ideas that we've already gone over and perhaps try to come up with some new ones other practices other ways that you might introduce gratitude to your community I'm trying to ring them softly, not the not the stop and finish like really fast, but the you know wrap it up a little bit. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. It seems like this was a really fun thing to talk about, and I hope you continue the conversation with one another offline about ideas and inspirations. I wanted to share one little um, observation that I neglected to tell you at the beginning that came out of that survey, which also was really moving. The survey of why is gratitude important. One of the things when asked, when spouses were asked what they're most grateful for, um, they systematically said that they were most grateful for expressions of love and affection and the feeling of being listened to, much more so than flowers and vacations and dinners out. So that's just something to kind of put into the, put into the toolbox and, and think about. But now I'd love to open the, open the floor for other ideas uh, that people had or that came up that, that might be uh, good to share in terms of how we might introduce, infiltrate gratitude into the classroom. Yeah. I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, when, we, when you started talking in the very beginning and uh, thinking about gratitude, a word that came to my mind was humility. Uh -huh. And I wonder if, I don't know if, if that's something that you I, thought I, about or looked at in the research at all or... Well, humility, I think what I would relate to the whole idea of vulnerability. That was your, that was your observation, that being dependent on the efforts, contributions of other people, of your community, of your friends, of your family, is a powerful uh, sort of emotional stance, right? To be comfortable relying on others and being grateful for that and expressing to them that that is uh, something that has benefited you measurably is, is, very, is, a, is a powerful part of gratitude. And it has to do with that sort of outward orientation, mm -hmm. right? I'm not thinking about my status. I'm not thinking about how that person sees me. All of the thoughts about who I am and, and what matters to me in that moment are sort of a little bit diffuse. What's really important in that moment is how much I care and appreciate this person and savor their contribution to my life. So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of amazing to see how I know this person that teaches at another high school, and I know this person really well, and she gets her students involved in a lot of projects where the recipients are unknown to the students, mm -hmm. but she's able to get these students to work towards, you know, like invisible children or whatever, and do all these things. And the kids just really get fired up about being able to give to these people who they don't, they're not going to ever probably ever see them in their lives, and yet there's this thing going on there. And uh, what have you done any research on on that sort of thing? Well, there's a, there was actually a really wonderful couple of articles recently on the Greater Good about the the relationship between sort of access to resources, meaning kind of wealth and happiness. And really what the storyline shows time and time again is the more you spend your resources on others, the more it's tied to your happiness. The more you sort of save, you know, put a squirrel away and or purchase material things, the, it just there's like a flat line. It doesn't do anything for you in terms of your long-term happiness. But again, investing in others, giving to others is, is, is reliably related to a sense of pleasure, a sense of well-being. Um, yeah. Um, we used to, I used to, and I'll probably implement it again, positive postcards, because I would see so many referrals mm -hmm. getting written. And so um, I would have teachers write down um, things that they saw students that, they, that aligned with what our vision was of our school. Uh -huh. And then I had students who wanted to give it to teachers. And so what I started doing is collecting, when I started putting with people's 
mailboxes, uh -huh. and um, sometimes I would give over the intercom during the morning announcement, kind of say, you know, kind of shout outs yeah. to different people. And it really did, it made me feel good just to be able, I mean, I wasn't really generating anything. I was getting to read some of these great things people were saying, but the kids <coughs> who were always the kids in trouble, when, you know, teachers recognized looking for the positive that they did or saw they made a the mm -hmm. change, it really, um, just gave a good energy. Yeah. Um, and then teachers, I mean, we really are under recognized, you know, and so just to see that there's this connection between the kids noticing them or yeah. that connection is really, really nice. Yeah, no, I really like that. And then I would push on you a little bit to add context, right? You, and, and I'm thinking of actually a program that's at my, my daughter's school. It sounds familiar, caught being good. Right, you get a, a ticket for doing something nice, which is your CBG, and the kids all try to build up a lot of CBGs. But can you add some sort of context to that? Like, thank you for doing this because it did this for this other person. It really made a difference. It made this person happier. It, it changed their day. And I realize that you thought about that, and that it took some effort on your part to do what you did. So again, sort of. Uh, instilling a little bit more identifiable context to an expression of gratitude or appreciation, I think, can, can again, sort of ramp up its value um, considerably. And the other thing I wanted to say, and I want to hear from you guys, is I wonder if there's, and, and I, what made me think of this was you talking about kids who are, you know, maybe the ones who get in trouble more often. Is there some value in challenging kids to think about gratitude towards un- uneasy targets, right? Gratitude towards, from a kid towards a teacher with whom they get in trouble frequently. Like, can that be a powerful exercise? Being grateful for the cow. I'm trying to look at the person who told, yeah, you. Or just things that you don't typically think of as having a contribution to you, right? Right? But, yes, yeah, cute, there you go, uh, yeah. Um, one thing that Holly brought up that I really liked was uh, asking teachers to write, and I think it was your principal or something that asked this, maybe. but just the idea of writing brief honor and cherish for each student in your class. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that I really liked about it was they do it right before um, assessments, and mm -hmm. they, like so it's a targeted time when they know that you know it will prime that like positive association with each student, and right before parent-teacher conferences. Fabulous, excellent, yeah. I was just thinking what you said about specificity and a specific example of that. So I started this thing a few years ago that school nurse who is a very um, spiritual and she's extraordinarily comfortable with expressing her gratitude, expressing her spirituality. Uh -huh. And so she uh, came in my room one day and she said to my kids, oh, I so appreciate the OG. And she said, you always give me preference of honor. You Every time I come in this room, you honor me over anything else, and I just so appreciate that. And, uh, and she said, I see you do it with each other. And from that evolved this thing we call Honor Circle, where we sit around. So then, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, you know, but the kids kind of said, let's all sit around in a circle and honor each other. Oh, so I'm like, mm, okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's sit around in a circle and honor each other. So we sit around in a circle, and they're going, I honor Maria. I, the next person, I honor Josh. I, you know, we're just going around, and it felt kind of good, but I said, well, why don't you tell us why? Yeah. You know? So when I said, tell us why, and they started to say, I honor Josh because all week he's really shared with me, and he's really been open to exchanging ideas and sharing not just the work we were doing in the workshop, but kind of his experience of the world we're in right now all through the whole week, like he brought me fruit a couple of times that he found and shared that experience, the tactile and sensory experience with me. And it really um, grew my heart, opened my heart quite a bit this week. Josh, did you know he did that? But anyway, then what the kids did when they started being specific is they naturally moved from just identifying to saying thank you. Yeah. You know, they, it just, when you add the specificity, it just drags them to a place, place of gratitude, whether they realized that they were there or not. Well, I think what you're describing really is the power of practices that have a tangible piece to them in terms of learning, right? If you're learning something that you 
that has some identifiable quality to it, something that feels personal, it, it's easier to sort of match with the rest of what you already know, right? You're, you're forming links between uh, your, your existing knowledge base and what, what, what's happening in this very moment. And, and when you, again, you relate it to something that you already understand, right? You're, you're going to more likely shift from, I'm just practicing gratitude on a daily basis to, I'm actually becoming more and more of a grateful person, right? I see the world through the lens of gratitude as a, in, a, in a more robust way rather than, oh, I have to do this thing to be grateful to shift in that direction. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of quick things. One, before I usually start any of this gratitude stuff, I share the research with the students. Good. Gratitude, to place it in this context. And I've actually found in their letters, like they'll be writing it to their mom, and they're like, did you know you could be happier? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. So that's cool. And then borrowing from like some talks from Martin Seligman, I'll do like a gratitude challenge, which is every day for seven days they write three new things they're grateful for. Yeah. And just something small like that. And that can be bell work or homework or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And by the end they have this list of all these different things they're grateful for. Yeah. Which is really fun for other people to see. There's the kind of contagion element to it. Yeah. You mentioned a copy. You know, the only thing I would say is if there's a way to tie a little bit more um, sort of episodic memory to that. In other words, what were they, what did they do, and how was that a benefit to the community? Right? Instead of just, oh yeah, I have got 10 CBGs. It's, I've got three CBGs, and one is for the time that I resolved a conflict between two other kids who were fighting over a ball. Right? And I, I went into that and, and arranged so that everybody sort of left in a satisfied way. So that kind of more specific memory about what it is that they did and how it influenced their community, I think is really powerful. I mean, at some point it gets like exponentially too much information, but I wonder if there's a trade-off between 30 CBGs for I don't know what, in this gener general I'm kind of good because I've got 30 and you've only got 15, to I got five CBGs and each one of these is about something super powerful and interesting. Some of them would say, well, what do we get with these? Yeah, so that happens. <laughs> um, I think we're running close to out of time. I'm so excited that there's so much enthusiasm about this, and you guys seem to already have really great ideas about what to do. I'd be super happy again to share more sort of empirical <laughs> background on some of the ideas that I've uh, talked about today. If people are interested, feel free to email me um, or look at the gratitude topic page on the Greater Good website. We sort of try to summarize a lot of this research there. And um, I want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your lives to come here. I know that it's a big challenge um, and um, it took a lot of thinking and careful planning to be here. And um, it's been a pleasure. It's been a real pleasure for me to talk with you. So thank you. Thank you.